Hey everybody, what you are about to hear is a Patreon exclusive episode. It is one of our call-in shows or possibly one of our custom episodes. Yeah, I pre-record these things, deal with it. Uh, it's one or the other and, and these will be heard a week earlier if you sign up to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the B plus. Uh, there's all sorts of rewards. You get to tell us what to talk about in these custom episodes, for example, or if this is a call-in show, you could be on it. Just by going to our Patreon, patreon.com slash the B plus, uh, supporting us for as low as a dollar. Every dollar helps. It's going to help us build the site, grow the site, get more content creators, get more people exposing Aussie wrestling to the rest of the world. It's the best place to get in on our mission of watch global, support local. We thank everyone, of course, who listens, shares, likes, subscribes, all of that good stuff for their support. And extra special thanks to our Patreon backers. Uh, enjoy the show. Wrestling podcast. podcast. Watch, Watch global. global. Support local. local. It's the B Plus Wrestling Podcast. You yes. might not be an A, but you are a B Plus. Check it out. Here we go. All right, ladies, gents, and non-binary friends, welcome to the B-Plus Podcast. I'm your host, Greg Unchained. Today is Who Gives a Flying Fuck? It's Patreon Day, uh, which is whenever the hell we want it to be. This is another custom episode for Patreon super producer, Jules. He's got us doing top five finishes this time, joining me as he usually does. Big boy Mikey, how are you, brother? Good, buddy. How you doing? Yeah, man, I am exhausted. It's been a big day of wrestling today. I've watched like half of Southern Showdown. Did I get it right that time? Southern Showdown? That's yeah, what it's called, yeah, right? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. I watched half of Southern Showdown. I watched uh, Ring of Honor, Best in the World, and of course, All Elite Wrestling's Fighter Fest. Did you watch Fighter Fest, man? Oh, of course I did. Live. Give us your quick reactions, because you you weren't able to make it to the uh, to the recording of the, the post-show podcast that we did. Yeah, no, fantastic. I gave it probably like a 8 out of 10 as a full show. Um, a couple of little minor little spots here and there that probably didn't work, but... Nowhere near as uh, this is a hot, this is a controversial take, but nowhere near as whingy as the rest of the freaking people in uh, the Twitterverse today. Um, people on Twitter are the worst. <laughs> oh, yeah, just whinging about the littlest things. I know we do that with WWE, so um, I know it's all fair game stuff, but I don't know. Like things with like with a chair spot, I'm like, there was a bigger thing to take out of that that nobody picked up when JR. Talk about the CTE stuff straight away and, um, you know, no wrestling company ever has talked about CTE on camera. Um, yeah, AEW it's, it's part of the angle. They're, they're yeah. playing on it. Yeah. They're playing on yeah. how bad it was. Exactly. Um, the things like that. So they'll use Sean Spears as the, uh, you know, the scapegoat to talk about CTE and, you know, all that sort of stuff. That, that's fantastic. Mega heel. Mega um, heel. Yeah. Yeah, just everything was just super fun. You know, like, even people getting silly about the Nakazawa Jabaili stuff. It's like it was <laughs> it was crossed over with CEO gaming. Give Jabaili his fun spot. It was in the pre-show. Like, calm down. Like it wasn't like it was WrestleMania or you know something serious. It was like I, I don't know. I, I found that enjoyable. I do agree with the Liberian thing. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine for BTE, but I don't think it works in all eight everything else that they've they've tested and they've worked on perfect i just think the librarian might be a failure but other than that all the matches are just fantastic um, yeah I'm a, I'm a little bit i'm cooling a little bit on the librarian thing but then but then at the same time he threw the tent off the stage and i thought that was hilarious yeah. and stuff so but uh you know who did make it to the AEW uh podcast that we did earlier today my good friend Riley, how are you, Riley? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. You're, you're not as tired as me. You don't look as tired as me. I feel very no, tired. No, I'm fucking pumped. Yeah, <laughs> pumped up, pumped up to give us a top I'm not, five finishes. I'm not tired from a day of wrestling. I'm fucking frothing it. Okay. So, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's because that's because you just get to sit here and talk to me, and then I have to go do the whole editing thing, do the whole uploading thing. Like, do you, you think talking to you isn't tiring? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm so glad we've got another person now. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is, this is, why does this show always end up 
the 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 Greg Unchained gangbang. Why? <laughs> um, uh, you're vulnerable. It's fine. Yeah, it's, it's just I, I, it, it bums me out. Everyone always likes to fucking pick on me. Like I'm I'm some easy target. It's just too easy. It is. Yeah, it is really easy. easy. I get too riled up, don't I? Let's talk about <laughs> top five finishes of all time. And I think we all have a particular gripe, uh, a particular bone to mm. pick with Patreon super producer Jules. Now. He's paying the bills, so let's be gentle uh, here. Riley, I'm looking at you. He ain't paying my bills. I'm coming for you. <laughs> Made my list hard. So uh, a stipulation he gave us on this top five finishes was submissions don't count. <sighs> so dumb. Um, yeah, I, I have, I have a, uh, a retailer that pays my bills, so no, I... I I agree with that. No, no, no. Um, I mean, it's fair. When I say he's paying the bills, like he's not paying my fucking rent. No, or anything, I know, I know, but he's I know. He's helping us get this podcast up and on the server. I know. And all that we we stuff. love you, Jules. We do. Um, to be fair, this is a shit rule because um, I know that um, submission moves get mo- moves that you use a lot through, you know, through matches and that. But there are famous finishes that are like, you know, the figure fours and those sort of things that. Ric Flair literally finished off opponents with for nearly 40 freaking years. You know, yeah. so, yeah. Oh, no, that doesn't count. No. Sorry. No. <laughs> it doesn't count. It finishes a match. Yeah. I don't I don't understand why submissions can't be right. finishes, Jules, but he said he was looking for finishes that lead to a one, two, three. In an act of defiance, we have all agreed to put submissions in our honourable mentions, though. And here's the thing. Here's what I'm going to throw out there to, to Jules. Uh, I like to question my assumptions about wrestling. And as I looked through my list, I was like, okay, my number one move is, is done by women. Uh, but I didn't have any women's finishes in there at mm-hmm. first. And I sort of, I was like, why is that? And then I, I was thinking about my favorite women's finishes and I was like, oh, wow. Uh, the figure eight, Charlotte Flair submission, the bank statement submission, brilliant fucking submission too. Definitely. Uh, there was a lot. And I was like, wow, women use a lot of submissions. Uh, uh, AJ Lee, mm. the black widow, right? Some of these are moves that I, I considered AJ Lee Black Widow for the list. And I was like, oh, wait, I can't put that in because it's a submission. So uh, I think that potentially, right, not consciously, I don't think Jules will do this consciously, but excluding submissions is a sexist move. Sexist. Mm. Oh, interesting. We, we do. Yeah. I, That's fair. Or maybe women just need to step up their game a bit at finishing. Potentially. Um, and, yeah, I kind of now feel sexist because I don't have any women in my top five or honourable mentions. So... <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is the theme with Mikey. He, he didn't have any women in his top five wrestlers. What none of us did. We all then 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 Jules was like, "Why didn't you have any women? You have to do a top five women now." So we were like, "Fair call, absolutely fair oh. call." And this is why I think like this now. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Thank you, Jules. But let's let's go through our, our honorable mentions. I mentioned one of mine there. I put the bank statement as my first honorable mention. I just think the, the we're doing honorable mentions first. Yeah, we do honorable mentions first. And honorable we, mentions comes last. No, we do one. honorable mentions first, and we go five to one. Okay. Someone doesn't listen okay. to the damn show. Nope. Are you not a Patreon subscriber, Riley? No, Dude, I, no, no. I, I've been on the B plus. <laughs> I've been on the I B plus for nearly it. twelve months. I really don't listen to our cars either, so that's okay. <laughs> wow, I, I really listen. I'm hurt. I put a lot of work I, into I, these. I, you know? I really listen to cars that I'm on, just because I get a little bit, uh, you know. <laughs> I like my own voice sometimes, but wow, that's unusual. I mm. I hate my voice, but uh, you know, people are listening. So yeah, the, the bank statement was my first one. I just think it's a, a ridiculously yeah. smooth finisher. Uh, she can hit it out of nowhere. Where she hits the back cracker and rolls through into it. Like I fucking love that move. I also threw in uh, Ron Miller special. Our very own Robbie Eagles almost won the IWGP title, uh, junior heavyweight title, with it last night. And uh, I also added in the lion tamer, the old school one where he like leans right back and steps on the fucking neck. Yeah, that was originally on mine, but I had to color it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so brutal. I love that submission. So those were my honorable mentions. Uh, what did you have, big boy? Okay, so my honorables, I do have two submissions in here. One was originally in my top five before you kindly reminded me not to have it in my top five. Uh, so yeah. Rainmaker is one of mine. Um it had a chance to make the top five, but um, just missed out. Just um, a Carter's way of finishing matches with that Rainmaker is just something special. Um, 
Then the other two I've got is this is going to be some weird. I've got some weird stuff in my top five, um, which people won't see. <laughs> I love weird. Let's get yeah. weird, Frankie. <laughs> the torture rack from Lex Luger. I that is one of my favorite finishes of all time. Um, nice. I, I that, loved yeah. it every time that like he was a big strong boy, and like every time that you, he got and he used to be able to get people like the giant up in that, and like yeah, he just made it super impressive. And then the move that did, that was in my top five is Bret Hart's sharpshooter. I kind of went Bret Hart's sharpshooter slash Sting, Scorpion, Deathlock. They're both kind of as awesome as each other, but um, I just went Bret Hart for this one. But yeah, the sharpshooter, that was in my top five. Um, I I do think you mean MJF's sharpshooter. Oh, hell no. (laughs) The pink and black, the pink and black, whenever that guy, Mr. Bret Hart, locked in that sharpshooter, it was just... um, Didn't MJF wear pink today? He did. He did. He did. These are the things that I love about all elite wrestling. But that's for <laughs> another show, you guys. I'm getting. It's very AEW date for me today. And he's, he's feuding with the Heart Foundation on uh, MLW. So there. Yeah. Um, yeah. There you go. Um, but yeah, they're my three honorables. And how about you, Riley? Um, it's not super detailed, actually, but and it's not in any order. But um, I actually had Carmella's Code of Silence, Ooh. which is like a drop toe hold into a sleeper hold done with her legs yeah and she does it so smoothly like i love it um i had candace laray the balls plex nice i don't know i just love it <laughs> um and i actually had hell's gate man and the undertaker oh wow Ooh. yeah it's a personal favorite of mine that had right to be move. taken off my one to five list thanks Jules. thank you we love you, Jules. Uh, that's that's all. That's all of our attacks at Jules today. Uh, we've we've gone through the honorable mentions where, just out of spite, we've put all of our submissions. Uh, let's let's crack into the top fives. I'm going to start at number five with mine, uh, and uh, we've got Avery, the Daddy Issues DDT. Now I know you're not too familiar with Melbourne wrestling, Mikey. Have you seen the Daddy Issues DDT? I haven't. I haven't. I really don't. I don't think I've seen Avery wrestle. So. Right, so Avery uh, was she at was she at Wrestle Rock? She, she has been. Yeah, there. she's she's done yeah. Wrestle Rock. She's with yeah. the Brat Pack. Yes. Yeah, I, I think I think so, but no, not not, not enough to know what you're talking about. So. Right. I actually found this move impressive because she's she's not a very big girl. No. And she like she like hikes it up, and it's like really tight and neat and nice. Yeah, that's that's what, that's one of the reasons I'm like it, it shows her. I don't know, impressive. I guess it would be the core strength because she holds it. Like, they're kind of posting up on her a little. But she she hooks the head in for the DDT and grabs the leg and lifts them up. And it's like a like a hanging DDT almost, but like a package DDT. Yeah. And drops them on their head, which you got to love head drops. Uh, <laughs> you know, I go back and forth on head nice drops. Nice and simple. As long as it's like a safe head drop, which this one always looks like a nice safe head drop, you know. Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm a big fan. Avery's obviously had a fucking insane uh, year this year. And, and so I thought... The Daddy Issues DDT, got to make the top five. Love that finisher. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, it's called Daddy Issues. Like, could it be more perfect I mean, for Avery? Like, I don't know if it makes any sense, but whatever, I'm into it. <laughs> it's her whole thing. She's a bin chicken, right? Like, she's, she's <laughs> trash. She's got all these issues. She's got Daddy Issues. It makes sense. It fits oh, the character. Sweetie, don't we all? <laughs> I love it. I love it. So uh, Avery's Daddy Issues was my number five. What did you put in the number five spot, big boy? Um, so I've got uh, Tetsu Naito's Destino. Um, probably, yeah, my number one New Japan move. Um, I was tossing up between this and Rainmaker, and then even though he's not there anymore, but the one wing angel was considered. Um, but the Stino, I fucking love this move. Um, even more enhanced with uh, Kevin Kelly on the commentary every time he hits that Destino. And Kevin That's what I was going to ask. Do you find the Kevin Kelly call to uh, enhance it or take away? Because enhance. sometimes I feel like it gives away the three count. Yeah, but just having that kind of feels like a um, a European or South American soccer goal when they do that. Goal. You know, and it's just, I just love yeah. it. It just adds that, little, adds that little extra zing. And just every time he hits it, it's just, I don't know. Because it's the NATO as well. He, there's so much swag behind it too. There's, yeah. <laughs> But the thing is, when he holds it, you know that the pinfall's coming, I feel. Whereas sometimes, I, I do like when he's when he does the swing around and he's going for it and you hear Kevin Kelly go, Desti, no. Like, <laughs> he cuts himself up. I love when that happens. Like, yeah. that's my favorite call in all of wrestling, just about. Uh, but yeah, Destino's a good move, man. And it's something that 
will find that I'm a big fan of, and I talk about this all the time. People who listen to the show know this and they get sick of hearing me say it probably, but <laughs> protecting finishes. <laughs> right. Protect the finishes. Like, God damn. And, and Destino is a, a, a very well-protected finisher. New Japan do well with that. Yeah, they do. And they do. And what did you have at number five, Riley? Um, for number five, I did have the Rainmaker, um, but I tossed up between having that or just like just writing Lariat, because um, it's had like little flashbacks to JBL's clothesline from Hell. Yes, they're just so brutal. But I really prefer the Rainmaker because it's just like simple, quick, done, and effective. Yeah, yeah. I like the Rainmaker, especially like the way he maintains the wrist control. Mm. Yeah. Right? Like when you train in wrestling, like wrist control. Wrist it's just so quick and tight. I'm into that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he laughed. I didn't want to be the creep. <laughs> I heard myself say that and I was like, Jesus. <laughs> That's what she said. Jesus. <laughs> it was, the, the, the Rainmaker is actually my number four. So it's a perfect. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can like go straight there. Yeah. Uh, Rain, and again, it comes down to protecting the finishes, man. Mm. No one kicks out of the fight. Well, very few people have kicked out of the Rainmaker. You know? yeah. But it's also like you can see when it's coming. And you don't know yeah. if he's going to hit it or not. But even yeah. even when he does like the <laughs> um, quick. even when he does a spinning one, you know that's not the yeah. like, that's not the end. Like because he'll hit yeah. he'll hit one or two through the match, but you know it's not perfect until Big he gets one. perfect. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the running like the running <laughs> Destino as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And again, see New Japan with their super finishes and shit. Like it's fu- it's like a fucking video game. And by the way, you know, by the way, this is going to all segue well. So Japan. is that your number four, Greg? Yeah, okay. that's my number four. What, do you want? what have you got? Well, my, what have you got? My number, number four? four. So this is very funny, actually. That um, that we just mentioned this before. That um, though it was mentioned. So my number four is actually taking it back to the eighties and nineties. Uh, Stan Hansen's Texas Lariat. So kind of. Yeah. I much prefer his. Um, and then JBL's was okay. Um, it's just I didn't really like JBL. I just grew up watching that, and I was yeah. like. Jesus, you are okay. Yeah, like the way the Stan <laughs> yeah. Hansen was just like, and it was just always nasty. Like it was just a stiff shot. And I'm just like, I just love that. So Raymaker and Texas Lariat should probably be under the same kind of umbrella, but um, sometimes it's just that person behind it that makes it a, a bit different. But yeah, Stan Hansen yes. is my number four. But that segued really well having um, Raymaker, <laughs> your number five, and then Greg, your number four, and then. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> and that was completely by accident. Like, we have not coordinated lists. I know sometimes we coordinate the lists to get the maximum flow. We're just winging this because we're like, uh, we've been doing things all day. But yeah, it's also saying something too that we we all like these simple, like, I feel like wrestling can be at its best when it's super simple. And like a good lariat. Yep. Like, it, it sounds so simple, but it's when it's- brawly. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Punch him in the yeah. face. Well, not yeah. in the face, but yeah. Well, that's what I liked about JBLs is it's just like clunky and kind of messy and just mm. angry. Yeah. <laughs> you know whose lariat I love? Doesn't he doesn't use it as a finisher, but uh, is she? Oh is, yes, like yep. the sliding yep. lariat. <laughs> so good, so good. Going to be a lot of New Japan talk, I think. Uh, but I'm I'm going with a bit. Wait, have we had your number four yet, Riley? No, no. number four. Hit us. Um, I had an Alabama Slam, Ooh. specifically Brian Cage's. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. Mr. to get my shit in. Yeah. They got a, it's really good. They got it wasn't He's a big uh, dude. They got it wasn't Bob Holly's, but um Yeah, I was that's when when you said oh, I was like, that's where I went. I was like, oh, yeah. we're getting hardcore Holly in here. Yeah. Yeah. Thought about it, but pick Brian no, Cage. Well, he, he did do a good job with it, but Cage is better. Oh, yeah. yeah. You well, know what? I just up between that and the Weapon X actually, but then the Weapon X was on a lot of worst moves lists. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like Huh. It's on a lot of worst moves list, really? Yeah, it is. I like the Weapon X. Yeah, so do I, but nope. Most people don't, apparently. Well, there you go. There you go. Hmm. We're moving moving right along to number three. Appropriately, I have the 3D, <clears throat> the Dudley Death Drop. Yes. Tag team finishes at Ooh. their best. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. I don't have any tag yeah, team ones on mine, actually. I, I I almost had Meltzer Driver in. I had Meltzer Driver in the special, like the honorable mentions, but then I took it out because I was like, we're going to say fuck you, Jules, and we're going to do all <laughs> submissions. <laughs> when it came to tag teams, I was going between the Doomsday Device and yes. like Sweet and Sour. So, yeah. 
Doomsday uh, Device was I, was another one that I tossed around, but uh, but yeah, I ultimately I thought like you can't like the 3D is the it's the ultimate tactic. I, maybe it's just because of what I grew up with. Again, when it comes to you with yeah. the, the JBL, uh, you know, clothesline from hell, 3D was like and the amount of times I did the 3D out in the backyard you know, with the <laughs> friends, like you know, it's get the tables all that stuff the whole it all comes into it the 3d is just a fantastic finish to yeah, a match. it's very exciting people pop for it they love yeah it. yeah what, oh, what yeah. did you have at yeah. number three big boy um so i've gone actually the gts i'm going cm punk's one i know kenta's was amazing yeah. um but cm punk obviously you know me i'm a super cm punk mark whatever um but that GTS, any time that he hit that GTS, especially through that 2011 to 2014 run, he just, uh, it was just a, every time he hit it, you know, the crowd just went nuts for it. It was always so, like, crisp. Um, yeah. Oh, so crisp. How the crowd and reacts what? is an important thing with finishes, too. Yeah. I didn't even realize until he just said that. And, and absolutely, like, the way the crowd, like, if it gets you excited. Yeah. Yeah. And my head always with CM Punk um, will always go back to that. 2011 Money in the Bank match for Cena. Um, just, I don't know, the one in Chicago is just so hot. And that map, that move is just, yeah, love it. Kenta, special mention there because Kenta was the original and the best GTS, but Cena Young just made it more special. Yeah, and we'll see a lot of that uh, coming soon in the G1, I assume. Yeah. Just to fill, just to fill Riley in on just how much of a CM Punk mark this guy is. We did top five uh, theme songs. He had three CM Punk theme songs in his top five theme songs. So he's not kidding. When he Wait, says, that's right. He's consistently got good music. Like, CM Punk has some, had some good themes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. His two WWE ones were just perfect back to back. Like yeah, they were. He's, I um, liked those. The Kill Switch Gage one, and then uh, the uh, uh, what's it called? Um, Living in Color one, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, well, he has he has technology. good music taste in general. Like yeah. he's just fucking hanging then, out with Rancid yeah. on weekends. Like. Yeah. And then his Ring of Honor one, that Miseria Cantor, that Miseri um, can you never pronounce it. Yeah, one? AFI. That he had a Ring of Honor. Yeah. Oh, that just used to get me so pumped. But yes, I'm a massive fan. <laughs> All right, what have you got at number three, Riley? Uh, number three, I had a Widow's Peak. Ooh. Uh, specifically fantastic. because I've actually taken one of those and it fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking awful. <laughs> and it's actually kind of hard to, like, hike someone up into. So... I don't know. Victoria's badass, man. She is. Oh, she's Victoria terrifying. Is she's still terrifying. Yeah. She, she was yeah. terrifying when I was 13 and she's terrifying now. <laughs> she was in Australia not long ago yeah. and, and she's still got it. Yeah, she does. You, you don't hear about her much. Like, she's obviously just doing, like, small indies and stuff. Yeah, she's just cruising along, doing her own thing. Yeah. Killing it. She, yeah, she put Steph over in Sydney, uh, sorry, Facebook uh, at the time. Um, I think she put, put her over. Yeah, I think Steph got the win over, I think. Yeah. At, was it Future Wrestling Australia that, that she worked? Either Future or Go. Yeah. I can't remember. One of the two. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no. I used to love that for Victoria. Um, how, her WWE run was so cool. Uh, how has she not... How did she not get the callback for, like, Evolution and stuff? And, like, when they do all this nostalgia stuff with the, you know, Women's Revolution, how does she get... How does she, she get did, left didn't out? She? Did she? Was um, she in the she... Battle Royal or something? I don't remember she her being when there. They, when they had the first women's uh, rumble, she was in it. Was she? I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I feel like she mustn't have gotten shine because I don't remember it. Yeah, there was a yeah. lot of interesting yeah. choices in that rumble. <laughs> yeah, they called <laughs> back a lot of the... Uh... only go up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they called back a lot of the uh, Barbie dolls. And the, uh... Yeah, All the t- yeah, from yeah, the time yeah. when they used to hire models, try and turn them into wrestlers. Yeah, mm. yeah, uh, but let's uh, let's let's move right along. Uh, number two, I this is my first flashy move. Now that I think about it, Ooh. and it's also other than uh, oh no, it's not no. All my moves have been associated specifically with people, uh, but this one is is a, a, only when this guy hits this move is it a good finisher. Jeff Hardy's Swanton Bomb. Yes, yeah. Fair all enough. due respect to the many people who. Uh, especially like a many many Aussie grapplers who use the Swanton Bomb. You know, you got Craven, uh, you know Adam Brooks, of course. Like a lot of people use the Swanton Bomb. I don't know. I really but, like it when Jeff does it because you never know if he's gonna live through it. Yeah, right. He <laughs> throws himself with such fucking reckless abandon. He does not care if he lives or dies. Yeah. <laughs> so and as well as he's gotten older, he started doing it 
in even more reckless ways. The Swanton Bomb onto the fucking apron. Uh, I can't remember who was taking it, but they moved. So they didn't take it. And uh-huh. he just took the apron. It was insane. Insane. Jeff Hardy is a madman. And it's a beautiful yeah. Swanton as well. It is. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. No, it's a beautiful move. Je- Jeff Hardy's insane. But all three of the Hardys, oh, all three of the Hardys, when it was um, Matt, Jeff, and Lita, um, right. and, they, and they'd all hit their, uh, all hit yeah. their finishes, it just always looks so good. Like Lita's moonsault, Matt Hardy's, uh, what does he call it? Twist of Faith. Yeah, Twist of Faith, thank you. And then he'd hit the uh, Swan Tone. Yeah, it's just a thing of beauty, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. 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 Lita's, Lita's moonsault is a good one. Who has a better moonsault, Lita or Charlotte? Charlotte, right? Lita. I go Charlotte. Eh, I just say Lita because you got a G-banger hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. Christopher Daniels just flicks her hair way better. It's way hotter. But Charlotte gets like the perfect arch. Also, I think Lita still does it a tiny bit better than Charlotte will at her age. <laughs> Possibly, she nearly yeah. died, I reckon, last time I saw her. Do <laughs> and to be, the sex- to be the sexist guy, I think Christopher Daniels has the best moonsault ever. But anyway. Best moons or whatever. I see what you did there. Nice. Yeah, yeah, well played. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so what have you got at number two, big boy? My number two is a very simple, simple finisher. Like I've gone along here. It's a jackknife powerbomb <laughs> specifically from Kevin Nash. Right. When yeah. Kevin Nash slash Diesel or whatever hit that Take jackknife powerbomb in the 90s, especially that long blonde hair Nash in the, when he was in the wolf pack and he would drop that jackknife. It was just... I don't know. I just love seeing big men using the right big move, and the Jack Knife Power Bomb is probably my favorite of all. This is a trifecta of like power. Yeah, yeah. Right. When when Nash actually cared, uh, that, <laughs> yeah. that move could look amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, a simple like elbow in the corner, runs with that big boot, then hits him with that. It was just yeah, just loved it, loved it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Big boot. I'm surprised we didn't have any. We, we're, we're clearly fans of simple finishes. I told yeah. you today. Have you seen when um, Billy Kay used to do it? I probably she have, but I don't really recall off the top of my boot. head. I don't remember what it's called, but it's yeah. a mean big boot. You know, I also really like uh, Dakota Kai's, like, the face washer boot in the corner. Not a finisher, oh, but yeah. just a great move. Yeah, just a great fucking move. What have you got in your number two spot, right? Uh, number two, I actually have a reverse Frankensteiner done by Ricochet. Um, I had a couple done by Ricochet, obviously, <laughs> but um, this is what I settled on. I don't know. I don't think he's really done it in a while, but whatever. Yeah, like from I'll the, it. from the it's P- kind of the first flashy one I have on here too. But yeah, from the yeah. PWG days. Mm. Yeah, let me bust that out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what a man Ricochet is. Oh God, okay. he's just a specimen. It's unfair. Oh God, to have the amount of like quality traits yeah. that man has. <laughs> Save some for the rest of us. Like, just save <laughs> some quality traits. Why do you have to have all of them anyway? But fucking smile. Yeah. I melt. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I feel you. I melt. Anyway, uh, number one. The coveted number one spot for me. And it goes to, quite possibly, the simplest but also flashiest move you can have in pro wrestling. Done by many a people. And in this instance, uh, I am not tying this to a specific person. It's the move itself. Many people have done it well. Macho Man Randy Savage mm. comes to mind. Uh, Bailey does a great one. Kyrie Sane possibly does the best one ever. Uh, Velveteen Dream does an incredible one. Dean Ambrose does one on people while standing up, Sorry. not as a finisher. Sorry, who? <laughs> John Moxley. <laughs> well, I don't know if John Moxley does it. I know that Dean Ambrose <laughs> did it. I haven't seen him do it as Moxley. I'm talking about an elbow drop. Can you get a better finisher than an elbow drop? Just driving the point of your arm like into someone's fucking chest there's so many ways to do yeah. it as well like yeah I'm yeah i'm into that so many ways to make it look good so many people have had it and it's been unique to them right like you got to think of the macho man the finger point the whole yeah yeah the whole routine Builder. it's and mm. and Kyrie saying just the amount of hang time she gets yeah. it's it's fucking insane i yeah I love an elbow drop, man. Yeah. Best finisher in the world. Yeah. Simple. Nice. And certain moves, like you said, um, tie into certain people. And for me, the the dive with the elbow is actually, for me, is tied to Macho. And, like, I don't have that in my top five or even in my honorables, and I do love the move. But my head always goes back to, like, a certain match. So, like I said, with the GTS, I went back to the Money in the Bank. 
And I always think about WrestleMania three with um, Macho and uh, Steamboat and just that that last elbow drop from Macho is just amazing. So um, always, always a good move. Um, I'm going to go with the number one. It's actually a, I don't know if anyone else is going to have this. Well, you obviously won't, Greg. Mine is from actually the All Japan era in the 90s and The Burning Hammer from Kenta Kabashi. The Burning Hammer mm. is, in my opinion, oh, yeah. the best fucking finisher I've ever seen. I And no one's ever been able to do it sweeter than Kenta Kabashi. Um, I've seen it here and there being used in some Japanese movies. But yeah, Burning Hammer, Kenta Kabashi, just the way that he would just pull it off is just... Uh, it, it had that torture rack feel to it, then it would turn into like a, you, you know, and it's just, I don't know. But yeah, yeah. Like the Death yeah. Valley driver from the torture rack. Yeah. It, it was my go to uh, with my creator wrestlers mm. on WWF No Mercy. <laughs> Every time. I had about had about seven different creator wrestlers that all it's used that. It's still my go to finisher for creator wrestler <laughs> in like 2K19. I still use that. I love yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> it's a great move. And what did you give the coveted top spot, Riley? Look, I had to think long and hard about this, but I went with something that maybe a lot of people don't know. Um, oh, I just went with yeah. a Stone Cold Stunner. Oh, yeah, oh, well, yeah that. Yeah, never heard of it. Who did mm. that? Who? Is... I don't know. Shark Boy? Yeah, Shark Boy. I just love it. Yeah. Why the fuck not? I mean, <laughs> how how we went through a top five finishes list and didn't have like Rock Bottom, Stone Cold Stunner until now, obviously, like. It, yeah. Because they're not yeah. good. They're just flashy. But they're tied <laughs> to so many yeah. memories, that, you yeah. know? And the stunner can come from anywhere, and he gave mm-hmm. it to so exactly. many fucking people. It's not one of the ones that needs heaps of setup. Yeah. Like, yeah. it happens and you don't even realize. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> the best ones are when he did the flip you off, then kick you, and then... Yeah, even like years. Raw 25 yeah. last yes. year. Was like, I know he didn't have a speaking segment, which was still weird. Um, but he came out and gave those uh, all those stunners to Vince Still and to Shane and that just, um, yeah. Mate. His was the best. It could be another 30 years from now and I'll still be like yeah. popping for yeah. Stone Cold. And it's funny, like, like none, of us have had, <laughs> none of us have had things like sweet cheap music. I know a super kick is probably the most overused move outside of the Canadian Destroyer right now, but, um, you know, Shawn Michaels' sweet cheap music, like that was one of the best. Best I finish. talked about putting that on my list and uh, I had it in the number five spot. And then uh, Riley was asking me, oh, is it just the sweet chin music? Like, are you tying this yeah. to Shawn Michaels or what about yeah. the super kick party? And, and, and I was like, specific. you know what? This is, this is too much. This is too much pressure. Yeah. I can't, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and none of us had the uh, one winged angel. I was like, that's, I thought for sure that one of us would have that on our list. I really tried to figure out what I could remove to add it. Yeah. We're all giant Kenny Omega marks. So there was a lot. <laughs> I, I, I think uh, something, something Riley said to me was, was Jules needs to be more specific with something like this because there's yeah. so many options. Give me like, give finishes. me a, give me a gender, give me a year, give me a company, like narrow it down a little bit. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of wrestling out there. Like there's so many things we can go on with. But I think overall we had a pretty solid list. We we all seem to have gone back to basics and included like one flashy move. I, I like yeah. it. These are good lists, yeah. you guys. Yeah, you can't go past some like flippy shit. Yeah. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> of course not. Like none of us had the four fifty. I mean, it's implied in my Ron Miller yeah. special. It's part of yeah. the deal with Robbie. And I was going to put Robbie's on mine as well. And like yeah. I, you yeah. know, I wanted to include like Billy Kidman's old uh, four fifty. Like I loved that six one nine. I think six one nine is still one of my favorites. Uh, okay. Settle, settle, a, <laughs> settle a debate here, okay? Is the six one nine just the tiger faint kick when Rey Mysterio does it, or does it include the springboard seated sent on? The does it include the leg drop after? No, I don't think it can. I don't think once once they're on the rope and he hits the uh, like the kick, I don't think it matters what happens after. I think the six one nine is is it's just the kick. It's just the kick. Because I think, like, you never see him, like, do that and then not do that. He doesn't just, like, yeah, go through the ropes, kick him, and then stand up, walk over, pin him. <laughs> like, right. he doesn't do that. That would look really awkward. awkward. He follows it every time. It's like a bank statement when he, yeah. to win when one. When he used to hit it, it in WCW, when he first started in WCW, it was a, he'd do that, wait for them to get up and it'd be a, um, 
Harakarana. A springboard Rana. Springboard Rana. And he still did a little bit. Then yeah. later in the life when he started getting a little bit older, he started using the just a, like a springboard splash. And then he'd even start going to the top rope and doing the uh, um, Eddie's uh, frog splash. Oh, fuck. There's a finisher I missed. Frog splash. Oh. Yeah, we talked about frog splash as well. Oh. We about, I think Eddie's I, like, frog splash. Just, that is, oh, my God. To your point. Though, Riley. I had the three amigos on that. Yeah, as three well. amigos. <laughs> to your point uh, about like narrowing it down, like I could do a top five springboard finishes, right? Yeah. Phenomenal forearm, uh, Jericho's springboard lion oh, soul. Oh, great! Uh, like, you can, like there's yeah. so many. That's so what many I mean. Like, it's... you were like top five finishes. I was like, oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, give me, give me more info. <laughs> so there you go, Jules. When it comes to something this big, we need more direction, buddy. We need. I'll get into the DMs <laughs> next time and 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 clarify. But uh, this has been. Another really fun top five episode. I really like doing these. Every time he gives me another top five, every month he, he hits us with another top five, and I'm always like, "Ah, oh, another top five. I, I like doing them. I dread it because it's narrowing down the list. Yeah, is so hard. But then they're really fun to talk about. So. Breaks my heart to cull the list. Yeah, yeah. And it breaks my heart. We need to remove things. I'm like, no, but you deserve to be here. And it breaks my heart that like once we start talking, I like like someone will mention another move. I'm like. Fuck, I missed that. I'm like, what the hell? Anyway. <laughs> yeah, just the most random things too. Like you said Billy Kidman, and then I started thinking about WCW Cruiserweights, and then I started thinking about Shane Helms when he was uh, using the Vertebraker, oh. right? <laughs> and so that came into my head as we're talking, and there's just so many options. But uh, I think this is this has been a lot of fun, guys. Let's call it a day. If you want to get a custom episode, you can sign up for the $10 tier on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the B plus it's the best way to support what we do here. Uh, Cause all the money comes directly to us. It doesn't go through the advertisers and what have you. Uh, of course, if you want to support us with the advertisers as well, we do appreciate that. Let them know that we sent you uh, big boy. Where can people find you online? If they want to hit you up and talk. You me B plus underscore big boy on Twitter and grapple. Yes. And grapple app. Get that plug in there. Good boy. Yep. 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 <laughs> and uh riley where can people find you you find me on instagram at riley underscore three dot one six very original i am at greg unchained on twitter at the greg unchained on instagram look at least you went with the, the stunner as you finish when you've got riley 316 it makes a lot of sense also it's tattooed on me yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay i'm just you know <laughs> you call me L- we collectively are the b plus wrestle on twitter because wrestling on the big plus wrestling everywhere else like share subscribe five star review if you like what we do and thank you so much for listening